Uh, I was very brutal. Uh, everybody's had long nights, <laughs> longer days. I know what it's like to, uh, 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 for the governor-elect and the lieutenant governor-elect to be in their position. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, the kind of the night that never ends for a while and uh, you're kind of numb over it and all that, but uh, I'll step aside at this point and introduce uh, Governor-elect Tim Pawlenty, the next governor in the state of Minnesota. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, uh, I'll be brief as well, and I just uh, we had a chance to meet privately with Governor Ventura and, and Lieutenant Governor Lech Molnow and shared with Governor Ventura the respect that I have for him and the, the uh, fact that he made an amazing uh, change in state politics four years ago. I've had a chance uh, to work with him on many issues, including efforts to reduce Minnesota's tax burdens, including efforts to try to reform and improve Minnesota's schools, including uh, one of his uh, lead initiatives, the unicameral uh, legislation that I was an author of, and we worked with Governor Ventura on that, a number of public safety issues, and, and the list goes on and on. And while we've had our uh, differences from time to time, I have enjoyed uh, working with Governor Ventura, and I'm grateful for his public service and respect him very much for it. And uh, thanks for having us here this morning, Governor Ventura. And uh, beyond that, we just talked a little bit very generally about the transition, and uh, Governor Ventura shared some uh, insights about uh, a couple of things he learned along the way, and we're grateful for that. And in terms of the rest of the day today, uh, we're going to be having some meetings here at the Capitol on a couple of some administrative and security issues, and then we'll be having a uh, press conference at 1 o'clock to uh, introduce uh, my wife, Mary, and uh, make her available to you for any questions that you have. And then we'll be spending the rest of the day in some uh, private transition meetings about uh, building the administration and trying to go forward with the transition. So, uh, Governor Lech Molnar, did you want to add anything to that? Well, as always, um, Governor-elect, uh, you've probably <laughs> said it all, but I do want to just thank everyone for um, being here and letting us be part of um, Minnesota's leadership. And I want to also thank all the our families, as you well know, on the campaign trail, and I know the governor knows well how much and how important our families are when we're um, putting in those long days. So with that, I do want to thank all of our families, uh, Tim's family, Mary and his two daughters, my family, my husband Steve, and our three daughters, two son-in-laws, and two grandchildren. Uh, we do want to thank them because uh, they marched in the parades with us. They did the, all those things that um, make our lives a bit easier, as hectic as they were. I know one day our granddaughter, who will be a year old on the 14th, and I think she was in 30 parades with us, will say, when her mom and dad take her to watch on the sidelines, will say, you mean you get to watch these? You know? So um, it, it really has been fun and uh, couldn't be happier to be here in this position along with Tim Pawlenty. Governor Elijah, what is it like? Very few people have been through what you've been through now in the campaign and coming in here to meet the, the governor of Ventura and talk about transition. What's it like to walk out here as the governor elect? Well, it's very nice. Um, <laughs> it's very nice. Well, it's, it's uh, you know, these are, the uh, the state is facing a lot of important issues, and we're grateful that Governor Ventura took the time, invited us here this morning, and uh, it's just a lot of things coming forward at us. We're going to have to get to work. We've got a lot of big challenges, a lot of big issues, not a lot of time before the legislative session, so today's going to be a work day, and uh, Carol Molno and I are going to get to work full-time today, and we're going to keep working until we get ready for this session. And, and I think we can, and Governor Ventura and I just respectfully have a different view of that, and, and uh, that's okay. Well, time will tell. Yeah. Please do, Governor. Thank Please you. do. I, 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 would, uh, I would like to say that in going back to the private sector, I wish them all the success in the world not to raise taxes one nickel. And I say that seriously, going back to the private sector. I hope and can look forward to eight years of taxes not being raised because they weren't raised during my four years. And if the governor-elect holds true, they won't be raised for the next four, and that'll take me right to retirement. So uh, I'm real excited over that. No, it can be balanced. It can be balanced. Absolutely it can. 
Sure it can. I don't ask me, ask them that. <laughs> I, I'm, tell, I'm telling you that yes, you can do it. But can you do it? <laughs> I think with Governor Ventura's return to the private sector and the new revenues that's going to generate for the state of Minnesota, <laughs> uh, that's, a Governor, start. that's a big start. <laughs> that's a big start. That's a big start. We just have to make uh, make sure that he, uh, he he incurs those tax obligations here in Minnesota. But I know that's uh, that's what the debate in part was about in the campaign, uh, whether we could. You know, solve this budget deficit without raising taxes. We believe we can. You know, the state's revenues are increasing 5% from this biennium to the next, uh, even in the middle of a recession. And so it's a matter of, you know, can we make Minnesota government live within its current revenue streams? We believe we can. And that's what the next two months of preparation for the budget is going to be about. No, not at all. I mean, I, my job, I was elected to do four years. I will do the full four years. And uh, that first week in January when uh, Governor Pawlenty is sworn in, then you'll hear me give my best Martin Luther King impersonation, Dr. Martin Luther King, free at last, great God Almighty, <laughs> free at last. <laughs> Uh, I'm going back to work for a couple of years, you know, it's, uh, and hopefully I won't be criticized if I hold more than one job. If when I get to the private sector, I'm hoping that no one will come back on me and say, doggone him, he's working too hard, you know. Well, I think it obviously helps our agenda and our perspective, but as uh, Governor Ventura and I shared privately, it also gives us the responsibility of getting things done. You know, you have a, a more Republican House, you have a evenly divided Senate, and so the finger pointing of saying we can't get it done because of this or that, you know, isn't going to be there. It was, now we had a chance to, to say we got a more Republican legislature. It gives us an opportunity to move our agenda forward more quickly, more boldly, and from my vantage point, from Carol Mulnell's vantage point, that's a good thing. Well, the top priorities for us are going to be uh, making sure we get this budget issue addressed, and that, that's probably going to uh, consume the legislative session. That's where we're going to spend the bulk of our time and energies. Other important issues on the priority list will be trying to continue to finish or continue the job on education reform and improvement. We, we talked during the campaign, and we'll be talking as we move towards the session about performance pay, um, some form of performance pay for teachers, uh, making sure that we. Uh, uh, replace or at least to dramatically improve the standards and curriculum we use in our schools. There's going to be significant public safety issues. There's going to be transportation issues. And so, you know, you can't just slice off one issue and say that's what we're going to do. There's four, five, six key issues facing the state of Minnesota, and they're all going to have to be addressed. Governor, like you have uh, some key positions within the commissioners, the DPS, one, Charlie Weaver has been a long time, and with the environment that we're in. What do you foresee in terms of the people that you surround yourself with? Who might stay at this point that you already are certain of? Well, we won't get into the specifics of who or what. That's what the transition process will be about. But in terms of the characteristics that we'd like, and first of all, I'd compliment Governor Ventura on his administration. And one of the things he has been heralded for is the quality of the commissioners that he selected in the administration. And, and I think they have served him well, and they've done a good job. But uh, that's because, in part, they have these characteristics. And we're going to be looking for these same characteristics ourselves. We want people who are, you know, have seasoning and experience in the issue area that they're going to be overseeing. We want people who have demonstrated leadership abilities in large and complex organizations. We want individuals who uh, have good communications and demonstrated leadership abilities. And we want folks who are going to be able to come out and work with stakeholder groups, the legislature, the public, and be able to bring all that all together and be a change agent. I mean, one woman, Dane, one woman. <laughs> Uh, well, certainly we'll be reviewing that as part of the transition, but we have no uh, formal authority to do anything with that until uh, after the inaugural in January. Do you know how long you running the transition? We'll be making some announcements regarding the transition on Thursday and Friday. Well, you're a governor, governor you have a code of ethics, Governor-elect, and if so, what for cabinet members, staffers, 
so what might that code include? Absolutely. The answer is yes, and we will review uh, the Ventura administration's uh, use of that, and I think the Carlson administration had, and maybe others did as well. But we'll, we certainly will have that. We'll make that available publicly as quickly as possible. That will be a high priority for us. No one like this blindly thought voters sent a message when they elected Jesse Ventura four years ago. Will you try to tell us if you know what message voters are sending today, not just with your election, but with uh, what looks like many, many Republican elections? Well, in a democracy in America, the pendulum swings, you know, and that's, it, it self-corrects and it swings back and forth from time to time in the circumstances, and this is one of those years where the pendulum swung towards the Republicans. And I think it's a, a whole variety of, of issues, a whole variety of factors, but it starts with the vision and issues facing President Bush and the federal Congress. I think that had a role in terms of framing the issues. On the state level, I think people recognize we're in tough times. We've got war and we've got recession, we've got budget deficits, we have thousands of Minnesotans losing their jobs, and so it requires a different style of leadership. And I think the, the message that we tried to convey in the race, uh, I think, was well received, and I think that's well, how we take it. Are you as conservative as many Democrats and many Republicans believe you are? Oh, how conservative do they think I am? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I've been in public life for, uh, I think, 12 or 13 years. I was on the city council. I've been in the legislature for almost a decade. And so I've got a, a long record of public service, and I certainly wouldn't uh, to look at that record and describe it as anything other than a mainstream uh, Republican perspective. Governor, much has been made about the, the Cheney phone call and what was going on many, many, many months ago. Uh, your thoughts now? <laughs> well, it's worked out uh, well, you know, at the t <laughs> uh, and I'm just certainly not going to say, you know, uh, that's the way we wanted it, but it's one of those things in life where circumstances develop, and you got a situation now where you look back on it, and from my vantage point, it was a great set of decisions, and at the time it didn't seem that way, but it, it worked out wonderfully, I'm, I'm uh, glad that we're in this position. Absolutely. Uh, there are many things I've observed in Governor Ventura, and some of the things that come to mind are his boldness. Governor Ventura is not uh, shy, and he just tells you what, what he's thinking, and he speaks from his heart and his gut, and that's why I think people responded so well to him four years ago. You can agree with him, you can disagree with him, you can uh, you know, take your views on, on his stances, but the bottom line is Governor Ventura speaks from his gut, and people like that. There's a sense of uh, boldness there, there's a sense of genuineness there, and people respond to that well. And, and uh, we, we're not going to have another Governor Ventura because he's one of a kind. Uh, and, but, you know, and I can't be Jesse Ventura, but I can be Tim Pawlenty, and one of the things I do uh, take from that is people want straight talk, you know, maybe I'll deliver it in a different style, and they want genuineness, and they want boldness, and uh, that's one thing that I think is uh, going to be part of Governor Ventura's legacy, and it's a good thing. Well, I think on many of the bread and butter issues, there's a fair amount of overlap. I don't, you know, there's certainly some differences too. But you know, Governor Ventura, like I said earlier, uh, not only held the line on taxes, but he helped us reduce taxes uh, in Minnesota. In education, he was, certainly was uh, an advocate for funding, but he also was interested in education accountability and reform, as was I. Uh, in transportation, we had some differences, so we have to set that one aside. Sure. Uh, and of course, Carol threw gasoline on the fire with that. But. Um, <laughs> We had a great deal of similarity on public safety issues. We worked with Governor Ventura and uh, Commissioner Weaver on the anti-terror package, which was a nation-leading anti-terrorism package last year, and, and the list goes on and on. And so uh, there's other differences, of course, too, but uh, as you look at the bread and butter things that most people are concerned about, the budget, education, uh, public safety, uh, roads and bridges, and jobs, the job climate in Minnesota, there's a great deal of similarity between my views on those issues and, and Governor Ventura's views on those issues. I don't feel I'm beholden to any groups. You know, obviously, people support you for the election because they agree with you. That's individuals, groups, whatever. But uh, you know, you have an obligation as governor and lieutenant governor uh, to represent the whole state, whether people supported you or didn't support you, regardless of what region supported you, what region didn't support you. And our intent, and I meant what I said last night very sincerely, 
Uh, we're not going to be the Republican governor. That's certainly one element of who we are and what we are, but we're going to be a governor for Minnesota. If I follow up, do you feel a special responsibility to help bring the state together or calm folks down? And because it's been a, two weeks of pretty intense emotions in this state for a number of reasons. Do you, do you play some role in calming people down? I think I can, Eric. Uh, you know, the, the, the bully pulpit of the governorship isn't going to be mine until January, but. You know, we've gone through a hard times as a state. Economically, the, the tragedy of Senator Wellstone's death, uh, all of the tumultuous events of the last several weeks in politics, I think having somebody or a group of folks who are in policy leader positions have a tone that is calm, that is thoughtful, that is uh, fair, fair-minded, uh, I think will help. And certainly we can use these positions to convey that kind of tone and message. Well, they were uh, over at Grandma's yes, last night, and so uh, I didn't, wasn't able to see them face to face. So um, I'm going to see them a little later here today. So I'm not able to give you a full account of that yet, but I'm sure it'll be rich with uh, reaction. Well, I'll give you some advice. Yeah. Keep your children away from them. <laughs> That's good advice. That is good advice. Yeah. Well, we'll certainly use it, uh, Eric, and uh, whether we live there full time or not, that's yet to be decided. That's going to be part of our transition review process. And again, Governor Ventura, I think, uh, needs to be applauded for the way he selected those commissioners and, and who he selected. We're going to go through that, and there may be some that we would uh, retain. Uh, others that many have left in terms of uh, you know, phasing out already. So we'll just have to go through that on a case-by-case -case basis, Bob. Well, I, I think I think I told the governor elect when he met with me privately in the office that uh, the timing of the budget, you know, because you come into this job, you know, it'll wear off in a couple of days for them, and then the reality really comes in. The election's over, and you have to appoint your commissioners all while you have to put together this budget and almost breakneck speed uh i really as i told the the, the governor-elect and the lieutenant governor-elect if there was a way they could shift that back and handle the budget in the in the second half of the year i think it would serve minnesotans better because uh it is that is the most difficult thing you do is because by state law that budget must be submitted by the third week of january and uh, it may seem like a lot of time right now, you're talking the first week of January, or the first week of November, I should say, <clears throat> but time is going to whirlwind and go by for them before they know it, and they'll be swore in and they'll have to deliver that budget. And I told them that would be the most difficult thing they're going to face initially. <clears throat> Well, th those are issues, of course, that the legislature has to pass and send to me. But uh, like I said, the, our priorities, first and foremost, are going to be dealing with the budget. That's going to spend, I, mean, I just would suggest to you, that's going to consume the next legislative session. These other issues we will take in due course, but we haven't sat down and mapped any of that out or ranked ordered them or anything like that or set up a schedule, Dane. So uh, I'm going to spend the bulk of my time in the next uh, couple months worrying about putting together an administration, making sure the transition goes smoothly, and making sure we're ready to go on the budget. Who would the Republican vote in a, a Senate that is, has become more Republican than it was last time? Are those likely to pass this year? Discussion? You know, I actually just got told in the car on the way in here about the fact that the House had gone up to, I think it's 81 seats, and so I wasn't even aware of that. I got to look and see who those folks are and what their political perspectives are in the Senate uh, the same. So. Uh, Obviously, with a more Republican House and a more Republican Senate, uh, that's going to put our agenda more fully into play. But I, I have to go through that, Ashley, and see uh, what the dynamics of those caucuses are going to be. Yeah, we all have different styles, and, and I mean, like I said, no, nobody can uh, be gov Governor Ventura again. But uh, the point, the general point is, regardless of how you say it or with what volume you say it or how entertaining you are when you say it, people want to know you're talking to them straight. And uh, that's one of the legacies of Governor Ventura, and we're going to try to continue that on as best we can. Governor Ventura, four years ago, you were provided with volumes of transition material from Governor Carlson, and he said he was 
going to make a, a smooth transition because he had had a bad experience. Have mm -hmm. you provided that to Governor-elect Kalani? Uh, we will be providing. Hi, Steve. How are you? Didn't even see you sneak in. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we, we have, uh, well, I have two books for them already that when we walk back into my office, I will uh, be presenting to them and, and uh, hopefully that will get them off on the right foot. Because as I told the governor-elect and the lieutenant governor-elect, you know, we all work for the state of Minnesota and, and I'm not going to provide any difficulties. I want their transition to be as smooth as it possibly can. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, if they can move the date up, I'll take that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't think we can, though, unless I call a special session. Maybe we could somehow manage to do that. But uh, uh, no, I want it to go as smoothly as possible because we all work for the state of Minnesota. That's our ultimate goal, regardless of, regardless of what side of the political fence you happen to be on. Uh, our job is to run the state for the people of Minnesota. And I, I want to do that as smoothly as possible. Well, no, I would expect it. I, I, I really, uh, you know, I, uh, Governor Carlson is, is a, was a very honorable governor and man, and, uh, you know, I expected nothing less than him, as, as uh, Governor Palente should expect nothing less than me, uh, full cooperation. Uh, the battle's over, you know. The, 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 you know, the vote took place. The people have spoken. And Republican surge, too. Do you have any thoughts on... Why? Well, I think the governor-elect hit it. It's, it's very pendulum-like. Uh, you know, people now, you know, putting them in a position that if the economy doesn't improve in the next two years and if the war becomes bloody and unmanageable and isn't successful, rest assured that pendulum, pendulum could swing back very quickly. You know, uh, the voter doesn't have a long memory. Generally speaking, their you know their memory is about uh, you know not overly long. It's now what's going on right now, and uh, and that can switch with the wind. You know, the voter sentiment. But uh, uh, you know, and so uh, I'm not going to analyze why you know this took place or that took place. You just deal with the results and move ahead from there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.